Hi, welcome back to the CG Bros. This is Brother Damien, and in this series I'm going to show you how to use an end cloth simulation done in Maya and use it to create a fire simulation uh, using 3D Studio Max and Fume Effects. I'm going to use a file from a previous session that I did on creating an animated pirate's flag using Maya's end cloth. Here's where we left off. Now if you haven't created an end cloth cache for your end cloth object, do that now. I've already done that for mine. So the next step is to export the Maya scene as an FBX file. We're going to import this file into 3D Studio Max. So let's open up Max and import the FBX we saved out of Maya. And accept the defaults. Now as I scrub the timeline here, you can see that the animation is not coming through on the flag mesh. So what we need to do is create a modifier on this flag mesh. The modifier we want to connect is the point cache modifier, located here on the Modify tab in the Modifiers drop-down here. Alright, so next uh, we're going to need to hook up the end cloth animation by reading in the end cache file data from the data directory of the Maya project. Not from the .mc file, which is usually much larger, but from the .xml file. There we have the animation exactly as it came out of Maya. Let's take a look at what the final composite render looks like for this. Let's also talk a little bit about what to keep in mind when creating a realistic fire effect, or really any other effect. The first thing I want to stress is that it often takes a lot of time to refine simulated effects, uh, especially as they become more complex and highly detailed. And depending on the level of detail, simulation times can be pretty extensive, so a basic rule to work by is to begin your setup at relatively low resolution and increase it as you refine your simulations. Uh, the second thing to keep in mind is the actual scale of the effect that you want to create. Determining the scale properly up front will go a long way to establishing an accurate speed uh, and amount of detail required to make your effect look realistic. And remember, the higher the level of detail, the higher the simulation times are going to be. Be sure to find some good reference footage for the type and scale of fire that you're looking to create before you start. This will save you countless hours, days, or even weeks of running simulations on effects that just don't look right. And the third thing to keep in mind is what force or forces should be acting on your simulation. Use your forces sparingly. Many of newer artists that I work with make the mistake of overusing forces. Just like scale and detail, start small and then ramp up as you refine. In the end cloth pirate flag lesson, I used a directional force to get the flag blowing diagonally and a turbulence field to introduce animated random forces into the sim to make the fluttering of the flag and the tatters more interesting and natural. We'll want to mimic that same behavior with our fire simulation. So let's get started setting up our fire. First thing we need to do is create a fume effects container to contain the effect. So come up here to the create tab, hit the pull down, and select fume effects. And here under the object type, select fume effects and drag out a volume around the flag object. Fuel, fire, and smoke can only exist within this object, so we want to make sure that it's large enough to not only contain the flag object, but to contain all the flames coming off of it over their lifespan. Now we'll be refining the size and the resolution of this fume effects volume as we go, but we want to start relatively small in order to quickly develop and iterate the sims. Select the fume effects volume, come up here to the modify tab and open up the fume effects UI. Now let's take a look on the general tab at the spacing attribute. This attribute controls the grid spacing of the fume effects volume. As we increase and decrease the spacing value, you can see that this little box in the corner of the volume scales also. Now this box represents the single voxel in a grid of voxels that fills the fume effects volume. Now a voxel is a volume pixel, so if you think of this cube or voxel as a 3D pixel, then the larger the pixel, the less the resolution. The smaller the pixel, the higher the resolution. Spacing is the resolution of the voxel grid. Let's go ahead and set our voxel grid at point 2. Now let's go ahead and round the width to 14, the length to 12, and our height to 6. Let's set the playback range from 100 to 300 and leave the viewport update at 10. This is how often the viewport updates as we're performing the simulation. Also, set an output directory for your fume effects cache. Something to keep in mind is that fume effects can chew up a lot of disk space, even gigabytes per frame. The higher the resolution of your fume effects grid, the spacing, the larger your cache files are going to be. Alright, let's stop here. We've made some good progress. I'll see you in part two.